The BMX Triples, a perfect mix of crowd-pleasing big air and head-to-head -head competition where the best riders in the world battle it out for BMX supremacy. Will the lucky losers become winners, or will the front runners cash the checks? Coming up next is the St. Pete Action Sports ASA Big Air BMX Triples right here on CBS Sports Network. the Sunshine City. St. Petersburg will play host to tonight's premier action sports festival under the lights here at Al Lang Stadium. St. Pete Action Sports ASA Big Air BMX Triples. It's the best BMX freestylers going big here on the Gulf Coast and they're stoked. Oh, how could you not like the weather here? I mean, the setting is perfect. Landing in 80 plus degree weather is not that bad, so it's kind of a prime location, which is nice. And I've always heard good things about this area. I know there's a, a pretty rich uh, riding scene around here. I'm, I'm excited to finally come here and experience a little taste of it myself. And uh, the weather is pretty nice. So. It's cool when uh, we, can, we can have moto, skate, and BMX all together. A lot of times it's just BMX or something like that. So to be able to bring it all together, you can kind of give like kids in the crowd like they get to see everything, like, oh, I want to be a skateboarder or whatever. It kind of makes it a bigger vibe, you know? It makes you want to ride harder. It makes it, makes it feel like a, 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 a big event like it is. Tonight, the boys will be competing in triples, one of the most innovative events in the sport and one with a rich history as it's taking these guys to Venice Beach, Miami, Times Square and NYC, and now St. Petersburg, Florida. The triples event, for me, it's one of my favorite events to ride. I know for a lot of the other riders, they love coming and riding these because they're simple and straightforward, and they're really, really fun. Two box jumps and a quarter pipe at the end. Super different format from any other events, but uh, definitely makes it fun and refreshing. It's more lines with like a dirt jump because it's a, a bigger gap and, and, a, and a bit bit more poppy of a jump. So they're really, really fun to ride, and uh, it's, a, it's a great time. Well, the triples is honestly one of the most unique events around, you know, including the, the course is, uh, is simple, but it's just set up for hammers. You know, there's two big jumps and a quarter pipe. It, it's kind of like a really fast roller coaster for us. We drop in and all of a sudden it's already over and done with. Some guys do come from a dirt background where they're not really quarter pipe riders or ramp riders, and so they'll do well the first two, but it's just one of those things where if you can ride a quarter well, like that's going to add to your score. This field this year at Triples is, uh, is real stacked. You know, we got several past champions out there, and uh, there's guys that are going to be doing uh, double flips, and I, I don't even know some of the tricks that are, the guys are going to pull up, but definitely uh, Andy Buckworth is a guy to look out for. You know, he sends the double flips like they're nothing, and that, that's a trick that's hard to beat. Every single person out there is riding good, but there's certain people that want it every time. There's certain people that can come and be like, I'm in Florida, I'm having a good time, yeah, I'm going to send it, I'm going to do this. But then there's people that show up like, I'm going to win this, like, I'm going to win this, watch your back. Nyquist is always one of those people. I could go through the whole list of everyone, and everyone could win it. It's, it's crazy. Everyone could decide that day and, and pull it all and make it happen. I don't know if I could particularly pin out one person that is going to kill it. It's just a matter of who's going to have that on day. And I'm hoping that I have an on day and not a blah day because everyone else is probably going to have a good day. <laughs> this event is a head-to-head -head competition, mano e mano. The format is really what makes it unique. You know, the head-to-head -head battle. We're all friends, but you know, there, there's rivalries, and we, we really battle it out. Head-to-head -head battles are super cool. It's just like be smart about who you're versing, I guess. You know. The fun thing to do on the sideline when you're watching is be like, I don't know. Like you sit there and debate with your friends. Like he did this, but he did that, and it was smoother. And and you just never know how the, how the judges are going to call it. But it's it's a pretty unique event. You know, it's hard to name. It's, it's anybody's game, and sometimes it comes down to how the battle stuck up. You know, a past champion can go against another one, and then one of the best guys gets kicked out, and then uh, at, um, an upset comes out in the end, and a guy who you don't think is going to win comes out on top. When you're going head to head against someone, you know, there's that much focus on just doing what it takes to, to get ahead of the person you're riding against, you know, and then it, it, every single time you advance, you have to just start back from scratch. After the break, it's a three-story drop to get the party started. Do not change that dial. The ASA Action Sports World Tour on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Visit St. Petersburg Clearwater. From award-winning beaches to nonstop action, there's a full lineup of good times in St. Pete Clearwater. By Bill Edwards Presents, a premier live entertainment company producing world-class attractions for over a decade. 
and by the city of St. Petersburg, Florida. St. Petersburg, America's favorite sunshine city. As the sun goes down, things are starting to heat up as the warm-ups take place and the competition gets underway. There are no easy matchups in this first round of competition, and that's what makes this event so exciting. Some big names on the start list, and some of those names are going to get sent to the battle background early on, including our first matchup. You have Scotty Kramer against Ryan Nyquist. When you're staring at one guy that you have to beat, you know, and, and it's just you two up and rolling, it gets pretty, like, I mean, you're focused on what that guy's doing. It's, it's not a whole field of 12 guys riding against each other at that moment. It's like mano y mano, you know? So it's pretty cool, and, and it does get pretty intense, especially when two guys are just riding perfect, and you see them do their first runs, and they both stomp it, and then you see them go back to the top and have to step up those runs that were already amazing. I mean, it's, it's truly, it's a really good show. <laughs> That's all you can really say. It's an amazing show. The field that we're, you know, I'm going to be competing against for this weekend, you know, you have the best guys all over this place. You have guys from Australia, you have guys from the United States. Um, these guys are top notch at what they do. And in this very first matchup, Scotty Kramer gets to start us off first. A rider like myself, I'm looking at the roll and I'm seeing not just a way to get speed, but looking at my first trick at, at the same time. So it's a really great event. I have the best time ever riding it and uh, I couldn't pass up a chance to come down the same key. So Scotty sets the bar with that first run, electing to start it off with a no-handed backflip, getting those arms completely off the handlebars. And a jump number two flattens one out here with this corked out 720. Now it's Ryan Nyquist's chance to try to answer back and counter that first run. I mean, if you're not up there and have like a little bit of butterflies, I feel like you're not really in it, you know? Like, cause for me, it's like those, that feeling of like nervousness of like, you know, like I want to go out there and ride well. And I, I kind of put that pressure on myself to say, this is the run I want to pull. I want to do this right now. Well, Ryan's been very consistent in years past at this event, delivering under the pressure, finishing off this run with a big trick, the bar spin 540. Spin those handlebars while the bike and body rotate around one and a half times. There was a one-handed X up flip to start it off, and then that second jump with a 720. In the triples format, when you go head to head, you have to bring your A game every single time you touch the course. So to be that consistent and bring your big tricks constantly is definitely gonna be a huge task, and that's gonna separate you know, the men from the boys. Scotty with that no-handed flip again here with a tail whip over that second jump and two tricks in one, the flare with an invert. The flare is a backflip 180 with a bit of a corkscrew twist right there. Ryan Nyquist coming back to counter for his second and final run here. There's that one-handed X up backflip again with a 720, but this time sends the handlebars around and finishes up with a bar spin 540 as well. So adds an extra variation in the mix onto that 720 right there. But the judges putting the number cards up decided that it was Scotty Kramer that would be moving on into the next round. Battle number two on the night would be Ryan Gutler going up against Nikolai Rogatkin. Looking at some round two highlights here. Nikolai finishing off with a double tail whip, and he would advance, sending Ryan Gutler into the battle background. Next matchup of the night, Morgan Wade versus Kevin Peraza. To win this thing, I think it's going to take having massive tricks and riding smooth and, and doing a trick on everything, meaning the, both jumps and the quarter pipe. Despite the game plan, Morgan Wade would go down after attempting this bike flip right here, which meant that Kevin Peraza putting down two solid runs, he would send Wade to the lucky loser bracket for more push-ups. We'll continue with round one triples action after the break, but first we caught up with James Foster to learn about the suicide no-hander in this trictionary. Hey guys, James Foster here. We're here at the ASA Triples, and I'm gonna teach you how to do a suicide no-hander. So a suicide no-hander is when you pinch your seat, you throw the front end of the bike down, throw your hands off, lean back, reach back, grab the bike, and land and ride away. Basic trick, easy to learn. You gotta have a seat that you can pinch, so if your seat's slammed, you wanna bring it up a little. And it's a pretty simple trick to do. You basically just jump a jump you're comfortable with, lean back a little, Pinch your knees together, lock onto your seat, and start taking your hands off. The more you do it, the more comfortable you can get with taking your hands off and leaning back, or pushing the front end away and leaning back more. But uh, yeah, pretty basic trick, easy to learn, and it's a fun one. 
Welcome back to St. Petersburg, Florida. This is the ASA Big Air BMX Triples. We're in the middle of round one action. Seeing some big names get sent to the battle background and some big tricks go down thus far. Up next, we've got Colton Satterfield, but before we see his runs, we'll learn a little bit more about him, both as a rider as well as an entrepreneur. Growing up, I always felt like I had two homes. I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Half my family's from here. I live here now and I absolutely love it here. When I was young, I moved to Pocatello, Idaho. The other half of my family lived there. I went to school there. And most importantly, that's where I got an interest in riding BMX bikes and started riding. Riding in contests and seeing how it affects the people who see it made me want to make my own event. Well, Ramp Riot for the community was an incredible event for Pocatello to have something that big and, and the people of the quality that uh, Colton brought in to Pocatello was incredible. He's proud of where he, he's from and he's proud of the community and uh, he wants to inspire the kids and adults alike and that's exactly what he's doing. The process of putting on Ramp Riot was pretty awesome. Other than just handling the business side of Ramp Riot, I handled all the creative stuff as well. I designed all the banners, all the shirts, all the event programs, posters, everything. Everyone that walked in that door was definitely in for a treat. I'm probably not your typical BMX rider outside of BMX. I'm real into business, the stock market, politics, psychology, things like that. It's pretty wild to think that uh, if I would have never moved to a house up the hill, I would have never been introduced to like all the kids that rode dirt jumps around here and I would have never learned backflips on that little pile of dirt and who knows what would have happened. I'd probably be in the NBA or something. <laughs> About to pull up to my mom's house right now. Uh, she's a huge influence on me. She raised me and my brother by herself and put herself through college and actually got us this house, which ended up being right up the street from these dirt jumps where I started riding in the first place. So she's been a huge influence on me and always been the uh, go get your dreams type. And uh, yeah, she's awesome. Colton's all about living, living his dream and doing his best at everything he does and encouraging everyone else to do their best. And that's exactly what he does. I, for one, can attest that a little bit of inspiration will, will go a long way. Anyone can achieve anything they want as long as they don't give up. So a little insight right there into the mind of a multifaceted Colton Satterfield. In this matchup, he would face Andy Buckworth, taking a look at some second run highlights here. Andy would roll the dice right out of the gate with a double backflip into this massive front flip and then caps it off with a flare. So three flip trick combo for him. Colton, no handed 360 backflip and look at this one. That is a 360 windshield wiper. His body and handlebars are doing one complete rotation and he kicks the frame around two different directions. Well, I definitely, I knew what runs I wanted to do. I really wanted to do that windshield wiper on the second jump. It's a really big trick and I'm pumped I was able to do it. It's just kind of buckling down and fighting through the pain. So there it is. Well, some of the younger fans definitely appreciating what you're doing here, Colton, despite the pain. Next matchup on the night, Pat Casey, Colton Walker. The head-to-head -head format's cool, I guess, because, I mean, really, I guess it depends on, like, how good of a rider you are and how many tricks you have or whatever, like, to beat another rider that has the same amount of tricks or better and just what combinations you can put together to beat the other one. Well, Pat is the kind of rider that's known for throwing and seeing combos like that truck driver to late tail whip. Follows it up, 360 Superman seat grab and a bar spin to late tail whip. So there's several of those combos that I was talking about right there. I wasn't too nervous. Um, I just, I'm more honored to be honest, like to be able to ride with all these guys. It's like one big family, everyone just riding, having fun and having a good time. And um, I really enjoy riding with everyone. So nerves don't really get to me like riding with everyone. Well, being the youngest rider in the field, the pressure definitely not affecting Colton. There's a bar spin backflip to start it off. Truck driver to late tail whip for him and onto the quarter pipe with a triple tail whip. That is three revolutions of the frame of the bike while the body and the handlebars stay stationary. Watch this, the truck driver. It's a 360 with a bar spin and a late tail whip. And here to the quarter pipe once, twice, three times around. Get your feet on the pedals. If I'm going to do a trick, I have to have it in my head, I guess, before. So I just do it, you know, like there's no 
you can't second guess yourself. You just have to be positive you're going to do it, and that's about it. So Pat electing to go for that truck driver to late tail whip, but has a little slip up there and has to straight jump over the second set. Watch what happens here. 360, spin the bars. There's the tail whip part of that. Oh, that left foot just never gets back on the pedal. So what that does now is it leaves the door open for Colton. I just kind of took the first one as, you know, like a little bit of practice run just to like get, me, get myself set in. And then the second one I pulled when I wanted to do flip bar tuck to truck whip bar. To, I think he did triple whip air. And yeah, I was, I was so stoked on that. You have to see the replay to fully appreciate this. A 360 with the bar spin, with the tail whip, and then he sends a late bar spin and the right hand fumbling for the grip. And he still manages to ride away from that and do a triple tail whip on the quarter pipe. That was absolutely unbelievable. And Colton moves on. Up next, it's 2010 triples champ James Foster against the previous night's winner, Logan Martin. If you go up against the best guy in the first round, it's obviously harder. Um, but at least we have the battle background to kind of make it a little bit more fair. So taking a look at some highlights from their second round action. No handed front flip out of Logan there. 360 double downside whip and onto the quarter pipe with a triple tail whip of his own. But James Foster, X up backflip and watch this one here, a windshield wiper and onto the quarter pipe with a double downside tail whip. Here you go, kick the frame around one way, kick it back the other way, ride away clean, and two revolutions of the frame of the bike on the double downside tail whip. Tough decision for the judges, but James Foster advances. Yeah, I mean, I was a little surprised. Like, his run was good, so I, it did surprise me a little bit, but I mean, his run was still real good, so it was, uh, yeah, it was close. Round one is in the books. When we come back here to St. Petersburg, we'll have more head-to-head -head action. With an average of over 360 sunny days per year, great arts, restaurants, and nightlife, St. Pete makes the perfect venue for our event and your vacation getaway. To get to know the location a little better, the crew went out with BMX legend Ryan Nyquist to get a closer look at this Gulf Coast classic. What's up? I'm Ryan Nyquist here in Florida for the St. Pete Action Sports event and uh, got a little downtime, so I'm going to check the city out. Woo! St. Petersburg, known as the Sunshine City, averages 361 sunny days each year. So to go along with all that sunshine, ah, sunshine. So to go along with all that sunshine, it has some of the best beaches in the world. Which way is the beach? That way. Who would have thought that St. Petersburg is one of America's best art destinations? St. Petersburg is home to the only Salvador Dali Museum in America. Outside the museum, we have this huge sculpture of a mustache, but inside we have some amazing artworks, anything from glass to some of the best impressionist works in the world. This may look like a scene from a grand promenade in Barcelona or Paris, but welcome to Beach Drive, or as they call it, Restaurant Row. Here, the action never stops. With the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg each March, you got baseball with the Tampa Bay Rays and professional soccer with the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Thank you, Ryan, for that tour of our host city. As we look at the matchups here for round number two, we started off with Scotty Kramer and Nikolai Rogatkin, then Kevin Peraza versus Colton Satterfield, and Colton Walker versus James Foster. But to start round two, Scotty Kramer. He has a really unique style, you know, with the dropping in with the bar spin and even tricking at the end of the runs. And here's an example of that right here with the bar spin it down the roll. It starts it off much like he did in round one action. No handed backflip. There is a 360 backflip and onto the quarter pipe with an invert flare, two tricks in one on that last feature. Even when you turn on that competition aspect, you never really turn off the friends aspect. You know, you're, uh, you're bumping knuckles before saying, let's have some fun, you know, let's get it. And uh, you're encouraging your competitor uh, when they drop in, even though you know you want to beat them. But Nikolai looking to put in work here in round number two. He starts it off with his version of a 360 backflip and a cash roll out of that and a triple tail whip. I have no idea how he got enough speed to make that frame rotate three times. The cash roll, you pop into a 180, then dip over into a flare, which is a backflip 180, a huge trick there. And how he managed to get that tail whip around three times, that is absolutely beyond me. But he puts the feet on the pedals, and that is a stomped run right there as he joins Scotty on the knuckle of the landing, and it's a unanimous decision by the judges. Nikolai advances to the semis, and Scotty goes to the battle background. He stomped his runs, I stomped my runs, and uh, I came out on top. So, uh, yeah, that was a fun one for sure. Next matchup, Colton Satterfield going up against Kevin Peraza. Kevin is different from anyone out there. He rides 
he's got big tricks, but then he's got like unique tricks as well, like three whipped inverts and things like that that can score as well as a really big trick. And so it's kind of hard to decide what to do against him. So Kevin starts it off with a truck driver to late down whip and just lawn darts out a massive front flip and finishes off with a tail whip. When I saw him do that big Superman front flip, I was kind of relieved to see him kind of mess up and only do a single tail up on the quarter pipe because that would have been a run that could have been up against mine pretty solid. And uh, after that run, I, I definitely wanted to put a little bit more down to make sure that I, I was ahead of him. So Colton coming down the rolling to answer back. There's a 360 backflip coming into jump number two right there. A truck driver to late tuck no hander and a no hand flare. Again, the flare, the backflip 180, but he takes the hands off the bars in the middle of the rotation. The truck driver, that's a 360 with a bar spin. Put your knees underneath the bars once you catch him. Take those hands off. Three trick and one combo there, but Colton Satterfield moves on to the next round. Up next, it's Colton Walker and James Foster. Earlier this season, James was in a historic race to be the first to land the quad flip. I ended up trying it, getting hurt. I still want to go and get redemption because I had it figured out from day one. I just was never able to put it down, get the setup right, you know, so I, want, I still want to get it done just because, uh, yeah, I put so much into it. James chasing that quad flip, but he's also known for doing so many other creative things on his bike, and that's definitely got to be going through the mind right now of Colton Walker. He's invented so many tricks, and uh, it was an honor to ride with him for sure. Yeah, I, I knew he would kill it and ride really well, and he did. He rode really well. Colton starts it off with a three trick and one combo there. The bar spin to late no handed backflip. A 360 double tail whip and then a double tail whip on the quarter pipe. Right there, watch this one. Body and handlebars do one rotation while the frame of the bike spins around him two complete times. That's a 360 double tail whip with a double tail whip on the quarter pipe. James gets his chance to answer back here over the first set with a backflip tail whip and with a seat grab Indian air to late tail whip. That's one of those unique variations that uh, Colton was talking about right there. And then a double downside whip on the quarter pipe. Round number two for Colton starts it off the same way as he did round number one with a 360 windshield wiper and the double tail whip to late bar spin on the quarter pipe. So he adds an extra variation into the mix, spinning those bars out of that double tail whip. One more go around for James here. Backflip tail whip. Over to jump number two here with that windshield wiper. Kick the frame one direction, kick it back the other way, and an attempt at a triple downside tail whip, but can't keep that one on the ramp and slides out and goes to his knees, and it's a unanimous decision right there with the judges. All three of them agree. Colton Walker moves on into the semifinal, and James heads to the battle background after the break. Welcome back to sunny St. Petersburg, Florida, home of the ASA Big Air BMX Triples. Time now for the Lucky Loser Bracket. Unique to the ASA format is the Lucky Loser Bracket, where first and second round victims of the head-to-head -head format get a chance to battle back into contention in a single elimination contest. Yeah, the battle background is definitely fun, but it's also like no mistakes. You know, as soon as you're in the battle background, it's uh, one run every battle. So, you know, as soon as you make a mistake, your day is done. It's a chance for you to, if you get knocked out in the first round going up against somebody who's really, really good or the second round, you have a chance to get back into the contest and potentially win it. It's real pressure, but uh, the guy that comes out in the end, you know, you feel like uh, you feel like a champion at the end of the day to make it through that, that whole series of battles. Round one of the battle back was the War of the Ryans, with Ryan Gutler taking out Ryan Nyquist. It was Nyquist that sent this 360 triple bar spin, but it was the 540 double bar spin attempt that he goes down on. Gutler with a one-footed X up backflip and then sends a flare on the quarter pipe, and he would go on to the next round. Second single elimination battle featured Morgan Wade against Andy Buckworth. Morgan with a 360 Superman tail whip and a massive flare. Mr. Buckworth picked up where he left off in round one. Double backflip into a front flip and onto the quarter pipe here with a double downside tail whip. That would eliminate Morgan Wade and Andy Buckworth would move on. Then Pat Casey had the unenviable draw of the previous night's winner and one of the hottest riders right now, Logan Martin. He does a truck driver to late tail whip in this right here, a decade 360. You only have one run in the Lucky Loser, so it's like, uh, you gotta you gotta land it. 
land your run or you, you're done. You get a little nervous thinking, oh, like, I need to land this run, I need to pull it. Like, you got a bit of pressure, but uh, I mean, I stay positive and uh, it, it worked out well tonight. Pat done a decade flip, but he just m messed his foot up, so he didn't do anything on the, on the quarter pipe. So I'm like, oh, like, I've got to do still pretty good tricks on the box jumps and then do something on the quarter pipe, and I mean, I should have it. So with that slip up by Pat, it would leave the door open here for Logan, starting it off with a no-handed front flip into jump number two, a bar spin to no-handed back flip, and again, it fires off a perfect triple tail whip, just sends that frame around three complete revolutions and rides out of that one super clean. And the judges, again, it's unanimous for them. Logan Martin would advance, and Pat Casey would be eliminated here in the opening round of the Lucky Loser. In the first battle of round two, Ryan Gutler rolls in against James Foster, finishing off with that backflip tail whip and then a flare on the quarter. James Foster capping it off here with a downside whip to late X up, and he would eliminate Ryan Gutler and advance to the next round. In the next matchup, Andy Buckworth sends this big 360 double downside tail whip, but it's Scotty Kramer, the eight-time X Games medalist, with this 360 backflip that would move on into the final three. Then Logan Martin and Kevin Peraza go head to head. Mostly everyone out there knows what the other person's gonna do or what they can do, so it's, it's, it's really just about being smart. It's like, I need to do this because he's gonna do this. No-handed backflip on the second set, and watch this again with another perfect triple tail whip. Kevin is amazing. He's the most stylish rider and trick rider combined. Big stylish tabletop 360 ends up dabbing a foot, plays it a little conservative, and gets eliminated. So the remaining three of the lucky loser battle feels more like a final as James Foster, Scotty Kramer, and Logan Martin all vie for a chance to get back to the winner's bracket. Well, I knew I had to do something because James actually knocked me out to get me to where I was. So James put down a good run, pretty much what knocked me out. James with a backflip tail whip over the first set into jump number two. There's that windshield wiper yet again. And the double downside tail whip on the quarter pipe to start it off. Scotty obviously done a good run as well. Scotty getting the bonus tricks in, sending that bar spin down the rolling. No handed backflip. Follows that up with a 360 backflip with a wild spin and a three trick in one combo here. The flare invert X up. I had a, a flip bar whip on my mind. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. I've been working on it a bit back home. so. Uh... I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Do it this run, it's all or nothing. If I land it, I land it. If I don't, then, that, then I'm dusted. So it would all come down to one final run here in this round. No-handed front flip to start it off into a backflip bar spin tail whip. And again, fires off a picture-perfect triple tail whip on the quarter pipe. It ended up working out, and then I done a triple whip on the quarter, which uh, worked out and made me advance to the next round with Colton. Taking another look at jump number two, a bar spin backflip to late tail whip there, and Logan Martin is the lucky loser of the battle back bracket. After the break, we take a look at some of the super fueled action taking place around SPX, but first, we get some of our BMX stars to tell stories about their fellow competitors. I'd say probably the biggest surprise would be the young dude out here, Colton Walker. He's one of the youngest guys, but he just won the overall championship at Recon Tour, so he's competed against all these guys and he's actually come out on top. I don't think most people know that Colton Walker is actually a science experiment. He's designed and engineered, engineered specifically just to ride bikes and learn and do every trick that's ever been done, I'm pretty sure. Ryan Nyquist tried out, uh, he tried out some of the slope style contests this year and at his first contest. I think he's four, uh, 34, but they, they listed him on the start sheet as 46. So the whole time they were freaking out about how he's older than some of the riders' dads out there. So <laughs> they were freaking out and they, they kept congratulating him for how good he was at 46 and then <laughs> ended up that he was 34 and he announced that. So that was a funny moment for us. I don't know why or how, but like I'm 36, but somehow I got an extra decade tack on there. So then all of a sudden I'm 46 on the Jumbotron. I'm just like, man. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm hoping I'm riding at this level when I'm 46, but yeah, like by far, I was like the oldest guy, possibly like involved in the whole event, <laughs> you know, like, so it was just like 46, huh, you know? And I remember another guy came up to me and was like, man, I'm glad you're here, because like now I'm not the oldest guy here. And I was like, well, you, now you're really not the oldest guy here, because I got another 10 years on top of what I actually am, so. <laughs> Welcome back to St. Pete Action Sports and the ASA Big Air BMX Triples. More than just BMX, this was a two-day action sports festival that featured the best in skate vert and some freestyle motocross and quad Big Air. 
to come and get the vibe with all the other sports athletes. I mean, we think the BMX guys are crazy and the skate guys, and they think we're crazy. And so it's cool to just get the different levels of respect from all the other athletes. I think uh, FMX is one of the best sports on earth. There's no feeling like it. Yeah, freestyle motocross, yeah, pretty dangerous. So you got like the best guys, some of the best guys in the world, and they're gonna be doing all the biggest tricks being done right now. Um, it's gonna be pretty insane. The guys that are here just are really cool guys, and not only are they good on the bike, I mean, they're great guys off the bike as well. We all hang out, just interact with the fans as well as we can, and put on a good show, so it's a, it's a blast. We got the chance to hang with X Games gold medalist Bryce Hudson at his bachelor pad turned science lab in Southern California. In a sport where dirt and grease are all part of the game, this young entrepreneur has come up with a plan to stay so fresh and clean. Grew up down here in Southern California and it's kind of known as the mecca of motocross down here. All the top pros, sponsors, and just every athlete is down in this area. I mean, if you really want to ride and be on the top of the sport, this is the place to be. I started out as a photographer, really. I mean, I grew up uh, riding motocross. But one day I brought my bike out while shooting photos. I was like, hey, can I, can I jump the ramps, guys? You know, and they, they gave me a little leeway. I uh, jumped the ramp, landed it, was perfect. And then uh, next thing I know, camera kind of got set aside and uh, the bike kind of took priority. I got invited to the X Games uh, in 2013, and it was uh, my first year, and I ended up winning. For me, that was a, uh, a big accomplishment. You know, it kind of set my standard in the industry and kind of gave me some credibility and, and things have taken off since then. Throughout the years of riding my dirt bike, it's really taught me a lot of good character traits um, growing up through the years. You know, it's taught me to be goal oriented and really dedicated and to, to stick to your goals and, and accomplish them. My latest claim to fame is I started an all natural industrial hand soap company called Grip Clean. It was just an idea I had for a long time. And then uh, after getting hurt in 2013, I had a lot of downtime with my broken leg. And uh, that's kind of when it all came about. You know, I, I came up with some good formulation on a soap product and uh, did a lot of testing with it and uh, created something that was really quality product. So I've really wanted to take my product to the next level and get it into a lot of retail stores. And so I went and auditioned for the television show Shark Tank and I actually got accepted and it was a, it was a long process to get on the show. Uh, but it just recently aired a couple weeks ago. Uh, we've had a lot of success since airing. Uh, we were able to land a shark, Lori Grenier, uh, famous QVC lady. And uh, we've been working hard, just really trying to get it into retail stores and uh, get the distribution that we need. So hopefully it'll be in a store near you pretty soon. And uh, that's, that's kind of how it all began, is right there in the garage, and that's where it still is today. So a lot of the neighbors think this looks like a scene straight out of Breaking Bad, but I swear, I'm legal, I got all the permits and everything. All I'm doing is making soap, and it's all natural, I promise. Taking a look at the brackets for the semifinal madness, we've got Nikolai Rogatkin, who's been on fire today, going against the banged up Colton Satterfield. Then, Logan Martin, who was a BMX trick machine, taking on the youngest in the field, Colton Walker. He's also a homie of mine. We've, we've done a lot of riding together. We've done a lot of shows together in Europe, and. Uh, we're roommates here in the hotel, you know, so it was also a friendly battle, and uh, yeah, it was just fun times. Nikolai starts it off, sending it down the row, and pops into a perfect 360 flip, and there's that cash roll again, and onto the quarter pipe, sends out another triple tail whip. He's been very, very consistent out here this evening on both the cash rolls as well as the triple tail whips on the quarter pipe. Taking a look at that 360 flip, there's that cash roll yet again. Gets a better landing on that one. We saw the last go around and fires off once, twice, three times around with the frame of the bike. Next up, Colton Satterfield. So I've been doing um, the three flip no handers and you need so much more speed. So I start in the corner to get the speed to do that trick. But I went with, I, Nikolai's been doing the three flips. So I want to differentiate myself from Nikolai because he is killing it and I would need to do something. And uh, so I was going to do a flip bar to whip, something I've done over that jump before, a real big trick. And uh, I went slower, but I didn't go slow enough. So I went too deep and looped out and sat down, and my back was just over it at that point. I got to the top and watched him do his next run again, and his next run, run was insane. Colton is clearly one of the best riders in the world. You know, he's won Mega Ramp twice, and Mega Ramp is debatably the craziest event. And he, so he clearly knows how to, how to do the biggest tricks in BMX, and uh, I knew that he wasn't gonna hold back when he did his run, so I had to bring my best because I knew he was going to, so I, I brought the quad whip. 
So Nikolai starts it off with another 360 backflip and then goes for a quad tail whip on the second jump and fires off a 540 out of that. We've seen plenty of triple tail whips out of him. How about four times around on the revolution of the frame of the bike? 360 flip, taking another look at it right here. Watch this one once, twice, three and four times around in one jump. And then the 540, one and a half times around on the quarter pipe. He did a quad whip in his run. And so at that point, I'd been like, all right, I can know. I know I can flip decade this jump. Like, I know I can do it the first set. Like, he did that. Here it goes. So despite the pain, Colton rolls the dice and sends it. He makes it, but rides off the side of the ramp. I pulled it. I'm really psyched that I pulled it. And as I pulled it, I'm like, yes, Nikolai, you're going down. I'm killing you. Coming for that next set and then just didn't have the, the lane ride. I was way too off to the side, but at least I rolled away. So uh, next time, next time, Nikolai, I got you. So with that, Colton is eliminated and Nikolai moves on into the finals. It's sick to be in the finals. I'm gonna see how I'm matched up with and then uh, gotta send my best, you know, it's gonna get wild. Last semifinal matchup, Logan Martin faces off against Colton Walker. When I got to Colton, I'm like, ah, oh, like this, this is a, he's a tough opponent. I mean, I was stoked to get that far. I'm like, ah, oh, I need to do something here. So into the first lip with a bar spin front flip. The jump number two with a quad whip of his own and a tail whip to late bar spin on the quarter pipe. So now Logan Martin is in the books with a quad tail whip as well. Spinning the bars, going into the front flip right there. And this is four times around of the frame of the bike, the quad whip. And out of that one into the quarter pipe, tail whip to late bar spin. Colton Walker has his work cut out for him next. Logan's definitely one of the best park riders in the world. Um, everything he does is so perfect, it's so precise. He lands so perfect all the time. So when I was riding against him, I was like, I was a little nervous because I know how good he is. Bar spin backflip to late no-hander for Colton with a big combo move there, a 360 double tail whip to late bar spin. And he follows it up with a triple tail whip on the quarter pipe. So lots of combo moves there. Spin the handlebars, then take the hands off in the middle of a backflip. On this one, body and handlebars do a rotation as the frame spins twice around him. Then he sends the handlebars around one more time and then follows it up with the triple tail whip on the quarter. I thought I needed to mix it up, do, do a few bigger tricks, and the front bar was on my mind. So here we go for round number two for Logan. The bar spin to late no-handed front flip, three tricks in one, and that is a 360 triple downside tail whip to a triple tail whip on the quarter pipe. When I pulled that, I'm like, ah, oh, stoked. Watch this, spin the handlebars, catch him, take the hands off the last second. Going into this one here, the downside whip with the 360 sends it around three different times. How he gets the speed to do a triple tail whip on the quarter pipe out of this is absolutely beyond me. You don't want to take that. You don't want to let like it work you up and like get you nervous because then you'll mess up. So I just kind of like, all right, I have my runs going, and I just did my runs. And then he sends something epic in this run. Watch this. It's the Twix to whip. That is a bar spin happening while a tail whip is happening at the same time. Then he adds an extra whip. But Logan, yeah, he, he killed it for sure. With a huge second run, Logan moves on to the final after what has already been an amazing night. He had to not only make it past Colton in the semi, but battle back through the lucky loser rounds to get here as well. Before the break, we thought we'd share some sound that we got from the guys about who were their inspirations as they became pro riders. Guys that inspire me are guys like Travis Pastrana, you know, dudes that have just been pushing it since day one and have never slowed down, and guys like Matt Hoffman and, you know, Dennis McCoy, and all the dudes that I looked up to as a rider when I was younger. The people that stay in the sport the longest, like Ryan Nyquist and those dudes, the only difference between those dudes and anyone else is their mindset after they come back from an injury. I think it's just a little bit of everything. It's the toughness, it's the love of the sport, it's the commitment, it's, it's everything. They're the guys that I just take mad inspiration from and they, they, they just were in it for the right reasons and weren't in it for the paycheck and, and uh, yeah, they're, they're still around now. Matthew Hoffman is, has been my biggest inspiration in the world of BMX. And I actually now ride for Matt Hoffman's bike company, Hoffman Bikes. So it's, uh, it's crazy how the circle goes, but I'm good friends with him, and he's, he's awesome and an inspiration. 
The ASA Action Sports World Tour on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Visit St. Petersburg Clearwater. From award-winning beaches to non-stop action, there's a full lineup of good times in St. Pete Clearwater. By the city of St. Petersburg, Florida. St. Petersburg, America's favorite sunshine city. And by ASA Entertainment, the leader in action sports event and television production since 1994. Visit us at asaentertainment.com. Taking a look back, it really feels like the best two riders tonight have made it to the final battle. As Nikolai was getting the crowd stoked through the whole comp with a bevy of snacks, including huge combos and cash rolls. Logan also lit it up with nearly flawless execution of every trick, as well as having to battle back in the lucky loser round. There's no doubt that Logan is progressing the sport more than anyone. He was a very big possibility to get to that final battle, and uh, when he got there, you know, we were up there, we were stoked. You know, it's, it's hard not to be stuck when you know you're, you're one and two. You know, you're just trying to send it even harder, but you're already kind of happy about the result. So Nikolai would start us off in this final matchup, picking up where he left off. 360 backflip, again with another flawless cash roll into that quarter pipe with a triple tail whip. That formula has been working for him all night long. The cash roll, again, that's a 180, and then you dip over into a flare, which is a backflip 180, and three times around with the frame of the bike on the quarter pipe. Then it was Logan's turn to try and answer back. First Nikolai, it was like, I'm like, oh, I, need to do, I need to do some tricks here. Like, all the things out of my mind, I'm like, it's all or nothing right now. There's that front flip bar spin to late no-hander, and again with the quad whip, four revolutions of the frame of the bike, and a triple tail whip on the quarter pipe. I know I had to pull something because a three flip to a cash roll into a triple whip is, uh, is a crazy run, and that was tough to do. Taking a look at some highlights right here. Front flip, bar spin to late, no hander. And watch this, one, two, three, and you guessed it, four times around. That is what a textbook quad whip looks like. And out of that, onto the quarter pipe, has enough hang time to do a triple tail whip right there. How would Nikolai answer back? We both upped each other's, each other's runs in the second one, and we, we both pulled all our tricks. So it came down to the final two runs for these riders. Nikolai started off with the 360 backflip to that second jump. He too puts down a quad whip with a 540 on the quarter pipe. So it is a battle of the quad whips out here tonight and the fans are loving it. He too showing you, hey, you know what? I've got this trick in my arsenal of tricks as well. We got a second, second run, which, is, which sort of like eases your mind a little bit. So he goes for the front flip tail whip on the first set into the second set here with a backflip bar spin to late tail whip and into the quarter pipe with a triple tail whip to cap off the night. An amazing night of riding here for both of these guys. His second run was one of the gnarliest things I've ever seen, you know, with the front flip tail whip, nobody else did that. And then the backflip bar spin to tail whip, also nobody else did it. So tricks that nobody else does for a reason because they're super gnarly. It taken one more look at it right here. The triple tail whip on the quarter pipe rides away super clean. And when it came down to the judge's decision, it was yet again unanimous. Logan Martin, your champion out here tonight at ASA BMX Big Air Triples here from St. Petersburg. Taking a look at your final bracket. Congratulations to both of these guys, but it's Logan Martin that comes out the victor. Let's send it down now to Catfish for an interview with Logan. Our champion, Logan Martin, you won last night. You did it again. What's your secret? Uh, well, I'm just out here to have fun. And uh, I had a few things on my mind to do tonight. I got them done. And uh, no better feeling than what I'm feeling right now. Now, one of the things a lot of people don't understand is that not only do you push yourself, but when you see other guys pulling these tricks, that pushes you a little bit harder, no doubt. Yeah, definitely. It's just motivation. It's uh, all the boys riding together. And once, once someone does something they want to do, it's like, damn, i got to do this now. Like, it's just motivation from the homies. A great night of riding, and congratulations again to Logan Martin on the win. A very special thanks to the great partners that supported the event, including Bell Helmets, Bill Edwards Presents, Visit St. Pete Clearwater, the City of St. Petersburg, John Tyson, John Sigismundi, and our amazing volunteers. For Catfish, I'm Jimmy Coleman. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.